Okay, I figured out you can rotate the craft with Q and E, and W seems to center you. Oh, F seems to fire something. I don't know what that is, but I only have 87 of them left. I'm not going to waste them. Oh, I found a rear, a rear view. Okay, that's something. Okay, I thought we could figure out these controls, but uh, I'm facing the back of the spacecraft, and I have no idea how to face forward. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the Interplay Parallax software classic known as Descent. This was a uh, 360 degree first person shooter game. I mean, it was technically a flying game, but it really feels like a 360 degree first person shooter game. And I think that's why we're going to like it today. I think that's why we're going to like it. So my pilot is Jay. We have all sorts of uh, command uh, options here. Interestingly, this game supported dual joysticks. So you could actually have two joysticks at the same time. Uh, but we're just going to we're gonna pretend that we're a poor kid and just play with the good old keyboard. Because when I was growing up, I never, I never had a joystick for computers. Joysticks were console things. Yeah, you know, like I, my computer could barely run video games. My parents weren't buying me a joystick to, uh, to add on to it. So keyboard commands only. Um, now, as I say, Descent here is kind of like a first person shooter, although technically you're kind of flying around. Um, and that's actually kind of what makes it neat. It kind of feels more like an upgraded Doom than it does a flight game. And I am notoriously bad at flight games, which gives me hope that we're actually going to be decent at this game. Um, I actually thought this game was another game. I have fond memories uh, as a kid playing a game called Terminal Velocity, which is similar to Descent, but it turns out it's actually not the same game. And I was confused for a second when I looked this game up because I was like, wait, isn't this the one I remember from being a kid? But it was not. I had the title wrong. Um, I mean, it's a flying game that has key cards, locked doors, where you can, like, pause in midair and look in 360 degrees. So it is more like a 3D Doom. So without further ado, I'm going to stop teasing you guys. We're going to hop right in here. We can be trainee, rookie, hotshot, ace, or insane. You go from being not trained to really trained to just, like, a psychopath. It's like the ultimate level of training is you just go nuts. Um, but we're going to go with rookie for today. So the PTMC station... Uh, this is our briefing, I guess. Um, oh, we even have, like, a dude giving us a brief. This is, like, a very shadowy-looking briefing. Is this on the up-and-up? Because it looks like, uh, looks like very shady. Damn bureaucrats, they replace us all with robots. Given, uh, half a chance, briefings are hell. Air is too sterile for human lungs. Endless electric blue schematics stinging the eyes. Oh, the schematics, they sting, they sting! And a suit from a post-terror and blah, blah, blah. Basically... What happened is there was a mine, uh, there were all these robots in the mine, and a computer virus infected the robots. Now the robots are trying to kill everyone, so they're going to send you in to go and uh, go kill the robots. So I will take that mission. If it is a mission involving slaughtering robots, I will do it. This is a long mission briefing, by the way. You can go back and pause my video if you want to see what he's saying, but uh, I'll TLDR it for you. Kill the robots. It's basically an updated version of Zybots. Here is our descent craft. Again, it is a highly experimental craft that, so technically it's like a spaceship, but it's not like a, a plane where if you're not moving forward, you'll start to crash. Like you can just hover in one spot, which I actually think is more realistic for a spacecraft. You know, one thing I've always disliked about like X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and stuff like that is that it's a space game, but it plays too much like a flying game. If you were in space, like look at the rebooted Battlestar Galactica, how space battles go there. You know, like, there's no friction in space. Your spacecraft can literally do a 180 whenever you want, and it will keep flying in the direction that you were going, so you can be, like, facing backwards and shooting enemies, like, spinning in crazy directions. Like, why isn't... Why are those physics in X-Wing versus TIE Fighter? Instead, it's very much like a plane simulator, you know? So that's one thing that I have always kind of felt uh, was missing in space combat simulators is the ability to properly simulate the physics of uh, space dogfights. Instead, it's sort of like all emulates World War II um, dogfights. And, and that's fine if you like those kind of games. I'm terrible at those kind of flying games. So I want to... Uh, I obviously want to just break the norms and uh, have Doom in 3D. Again, which is kind of what this game is like. All right, we're getting all sorts of information about these robots. Uh, tough and agile. I thought this said tough but fragile. Like he was really strong, but he had like emotional demons, you know? This is like the robot that feels. All right, so these are all the, the evil robots, blah, blah, blah. This is the standard emergency exit. Uh, it's hardwired to open the event of reactor failures. Locating the exit hatches before destroying the reactors would be wise. 
All right. So kill all the robots. Man, this is a long briefing. They're really, they're really trying to immerse you in the world of a futuristic space bureaucracy. They're like, we want it to feel realistic. Filling out reports, waiting for long periods of time, uh, you know, coming up with idle chit chat so as to reduce the awkwardness when you're interacting with your coworkers. We want it all in Descent. All right, here we are in the world of Descent, and I'm just sort of figuring out the controls as I go. Uh, so control shoots. Which makes sense. Control was shoot in doom. Oh, here's our first enemy. He got a few licks in. That's okay. So A and Z. A moves forward. Z moves back. We have to figure out how to strafe before we go on here. Okay, I figured out you can rotate the craft with Q and E. And W seems to center you. Oh, F seems to fire something. I don't know what that is, but I only have 87 of them left. I'm not going to waste them. Oh, I found a rear, a rear view. Okay, that's something. Okay, I thought we could figure out these controls, but uh, I'm facing the back of the spacecraft, and I have no idea how to face forward. Okay, let's go and edit the controls. We'll come back. This is the very beginning of the first level, so we didn't miss nothing. Okay, so it actually looks like we should be using the number pad instead, because we can slide left and right with number one, number three, slide up or down. Okay, that makes sense. Bank left. Oh, the number pad is where you want to be for this. Primary fire is one of the controls. Secondary fire is space. Flare, that's what the F was. B is for bomb. R is for rear view. Tab is for auto map. Accelerate and reverse. All right. I think we got this. Let's go ahead and <laughs> we have to start a new game. Let's uh, skip all the bureaucracy though and go right into it. All right, here we go. I'm now using the numpad. And oh yeah, this is, this is how you want to play the game. And we use control. Man, I have not played like an old school first person shooter like this purely on a uh, keyboard in ages. Really takes me back. Really takes me back. I mean, this is how you played Doom back in the day. Control shot and you held alt to go left or right, like strafe left or right. And then beyond that, uh, we're doing pretty bad here, by the way. Beyond that, you uh, you held, uh, you used the arrow keys. Arrow keys, space bar, it was all, it was pretty basic, pretty basic stuff. But this is what I mean about, like, it is basically like Doom. You know, like, I can look down and up, but, you know, at least in this initial level, it's a lot of hallways and stuff like that. So, oh, look, there's people there's people in there who need rescue. All right, we'll see if we can rescue you dudes later. Oh, these are bad guys. Kill them, kill them. Oh, we're, like, rotating in a weird way. Let's uh, correct our view here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, like, if, if you if you didn't pay too much attention to it, and you were just kind of watching someone in the background, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is a first-person shooter. It kind of looks like one. It kind of plays like one, in fact. Uh, I mean, it plays a little differently, though, obviously, because you uh, can go up and down. But it basically is like an enhanced first-person shooter. Um, it's also one of the earliest 3D games. It came out a year before Quake. Oh, I thought that was a door. It came out a year before Quake. Um, and it, uh, you know, has full 3D polygons and stuff like that. It looks pretty damn good for, for when it actually came out, I think. Um, but it is, you know, very much like the Doom Quake mentality of these, like, uh, sort of mazy levels. Ooh, that regenerated me. I will take that. Die! So these are good things. Oh, look at that. That guy's, he was dodging our shots. So those are regeneration alcoves. We'll take that. All right, all the stinking mining equipment. Don't you hate it when mining equipment goes rogue? Um, I think I've been here. Oh, yeah, I, I just came from here. Oh, God. <laughs> There's some guy, some jerk at the end of a hall trying to shoot at me. Jeez. Um, I love the graphics in this game, by the way. This game is, uh, is an old school VGA game, meaning it uses all glorious 300... And 20 by 240 and 200 pixels and 256 colors of VGA's mode 13. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. You'd be forgiven, but it's just old tech speak. 320 by 240 by 256 or by 8-bit colors, I guess. And that's the the best games were really written in that uh, in that uh, you know video mode. Also, like uh, this game ran on 386s, so you know there's some more old PC specs. I love old PC specs. Just the word 386, like, uh, really, really takes me back. Um, so I should talk about the game that I thought this was, actually. And how do we open these doors, by the way? I have no idea. Oh, God, I'm, like, facing the floor. 
Um, I thought this game was a game called Terminal Velocity. Terminal Velocity is very similar to Descent. So Descent actually was a pretty influential game, and it, it influenced a lot that came after it. And in 1995, so a couple years after uh, Descent here, a game called Terminal Velocity was put out by 3D Realms, so the creators of... Um, of uh, Duke Nukem 3D, and it basically was just like this, where you were in a spacecraft that could hover, and you would sort of fly all over the place, and you would explore tunnels, and also like a surface world, and you had to blow up bases and stuff like that. Yeah, let's fire some missiles. Oh, we're missing. We're missing with our missiles. Oh, and they killed us! Oops. Press any button to continue. Okay, hope uh, hopefully we have infinite lives. We probably do not, so I need to be more careful. I, I just assumed everything was okay, but... I guess, I, I'm playing on rookie mode for a reason, guys. It's because I am a rookie. Oh my god, there's lots of bad guys. Run! Run! Run away, little spaceship! Run away! Oh, they're just everywhere. Oh my god, what am I facing? A floor? Oh, this is painful for me. I can only imagine how painful it is for you to watch. Okay, level ourselves out. We dead yet? We are not. Let's go ahead and get this stuff. Oh, what am I facing? I'm like bouncing off of ceilings and stuff and getting really disoriented. I think I'm I think I'm upside down. Hold on. How do I how do I fix this? Go like this. All right. All right. I think that's right side up. Sort of. I have no idea where I am. I'm totally lost now. Totally discombobulated. Wait, how did I How did I get in here? Where am I? I'm I'm trapped in a in a room in like a tiny What the heck? Okay, so there's my 3D map by the way. And it doesn't help me at all. Oh, wait. Forward and to the left, I guess? Or something? So, like, this way? Oh, there's a door here! Oh, that's what it was! I'm like, how did I end up in a room with no exits? Knowing me, it would happen, but there was a secret door. Alright. So, there are secret doors, good to know. Anyway, I thought this game was a game called Terminal Velocity. Which is actually, in and of itself, kind of a fun game. And I'm thinking uh, on Saturday, maybe I'll play Terminal Velocity. Just so we can compare it to Descent here. Because I know Terminal Velocity better than this. This one I'm just kind of like, uh, I feel like I'm playing Marathon. Uh, you know, that uh, that old original like Bungie first person shooter game. It's sort of like a classic game, but I just don't happen to know it very well. So I'm not going to be able to do very well at it. Um, that's what I feel like I'm doing right now, so... Uh, with Terminal Velocity, maybe I could give you a bit better show and, and speak a little more truly to my memories. I had, like, memories lined up I was going to talk about with this game, and then I booted the game up. I'm like, hey, that's the wrong game. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you guys where, like, you, you think you remember playing a game, and then you load it up and you realize you were thinking of a totally different game? Has that ever happened? Or, like, a movie or something like that? Um, here, there, here's an example of a red door. So we need to find the red access key. How many... How many spaceships do you know that can open doors? Hey, wait, are we right at the beginning again? Oh, we totally are. Okay, where have we not been? Um, oh, look. There's like a red thing down into the left. That could be something. There's also two people there. Okay, this auto map actually is super handy. It's pretty awesome. I've never seen a three-dimensional map in a game this, uh, this old, actually. This is pretty impressive. Okay, so we want to come down here. And then we kind of want to go to the left when we can. All right. So like kind of like this, like in here. And we kind of want to go down here. And then what is this? Okay, now what? Now we kind of want to go to our right. There's something. It's, it's kind of hard to read the map, to be totally honest. Maybe something up like this. Okay, did we make it? Um, no, we just came back from where we <laughs> we came back from whence we came. All right, this is gonna take a little while. I'm spatially incompetent here. Okay, I think maybe like this. And now um, we might possibly maybe be going where we need to go. I'm so lost. All right, let's just go down this tube. All right, did we do it? We are back in the main room. God damn it. Okay, I think what I'm seeing on the map is this, like, grating here, and I don't know how to get past it. Pretty sure missiles don't do anything, flares do nothing. We gotta find something else. Maybe there's a door open button, but I don't want to, like, exit the game to find out. So, I guess let's continue to explore other parts of the level here. Oh man, even the map is trippy. Look at this. 
so hard to figure out where you're going. Okay, so there is like a room kind of at the bottom I didn't finish fully exploring. I don't know if you guys can see it. See how there's like two kind of wireframes that aren't connected? Kind of in the middle left side of the screen right there. So I feel like that's where I'm going to try and get to. We'll see if I can actually get there, but that's where I'm going to try and get. Anyway, uh, yeah, I used to play Terminal Velocity back in the school computer labs. It was sort of back in the day before I could uh, afford a good computer. And uh, I remember, I oh, man, I remember like bringing in shareware games on 3.5 inch floppy disks and installing them on the school computers and just like just like going to town like staying after school to like play video games like that's what i did man that is what i did it was it was totally awesome um and yeah i don't know i don't know if you guys remember shareware games but like shareware was the way to go it was like free video games back in the day like legally free video games Basically, the model was, like, they would give away... They would make a game that would have, like, three episodes. They'd give away the first one. So, like, Doom was shareware. Commander Keen was shareware. Like, a Pogi software was, like, my lifeblood when I was a kid. I played so many Commander Keens, all only the first episode, though. Because <laughs> I couldn't afford the actual games. Um, wait, now where am I? Oh, there we go. I'm, like, getting caught in closets and stuff. This is... I, I am no, like, hero of Space Mines, man. I'm, like, getting caught in, like, ridiculously stupid ways. Um, and, like, I can't even find where to go. This is actually, like, super frustrating. Okay. I want to... Oh, I think I went down, like, the totally the wrong way. Okay. We want to go back here. Man, is this, I, I hope this isn't too painful to watch. This is a raw... This is a kind of experience you don't get on your hyper-produced YouTube videos, guys. This is, like, raw, uncut experience of somebody who's never played this game before going in for the first time this is what it's like for them oh wait a red key card a red key card sweet we got it oh but there's a guy in here we should probably kill him before he kills us wow okay it was that easy eh we can go ahead and get a shield boost so in the lava room i, I don't know how i missed that oh i guess this is the room where i just panicked and ran okay that would make a lot of sense so in future levels, I'm not going to panic and run. I'm going to explore them in a little more systematic ways. So this, I think, leads back from where we came from. Yeah. So let's continue to explore down here. And the red access door, whatever, was at the beginning of the, the map, as I seem to recall. Okay. Oh, it looks like we've actually explored that room. I think that was the room we got trapped in. All right, leave it to old Gaming Jay to be sent in to rescue people and, like, lock himself in a closet. That totally sounds like my MO. Totally sounds like it. All right, here's the red door. Let's see what wonders are behind this door. Oh, it's a stinking robot. I knew it. Ow, what the heck? Where'd that come from? Who shot that? Oh, there's a guy being real sneaky over here. I didn't know being sneaky was allowed. All right, and off we go. Man, I'm getting so disoriented as to, like, which way's up and which way's down. Um, okay. And it's also really hard to, like, strafe in this game because, oh, my God. I'm just, like, sitting here taking it. Oh, God. Oh, I took it bad. I took it bad. All right, let's uh, go back. Go back into that room. Hopefully, we still have the red key card. Um, back in the day, by the way, there were two sequels to Descent. There was Descent 2 and Descent 3. Um, I never really played them. Um, and actually, as it turns out, I never really even played Descent number 1 here. Uh, thought I did, but turns out I did not. Uh, but yeah, there were two sequels, and then a couple years ago, they kickstarted. oh wait, this is where I came from, they tried to kickstart a prequel to Descent, and, oh, get this, get what they named the prequel to Descent, Descent, <laughs> don't you hate that, I, I hate it when companies do that, when they're like, hey, let's make a prequel to something, and we'll call it the same name as the thing that it's the prequel to, oh, there we go, we blew up the core, Go, 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 before the whole level explodes. Yeah! Hey, we actually passed the level. Bet you guys didn't think I had any... Oh, it was on the moon the whole time. No idea. Didn't even know. Level one complete, lunar outpost destroyed. Wait, so I didn't have to kill any robots? I, I could have just gone in and blown up the whole base? Why don't we just nuke it from orbit? That would seem to be the smarter, the smarter way to go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save our game. This is uh, Jay's awesome... Oh my god, learn to spell awesome adventure number one. Because there will be other awesome adventures. All right, and then we're getting uh, more briefing and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, why would you call a prequel to Descent Descent? 
That's like the Xbox One or the iPad. You know, there's the iPad One, the iPad Two, and then the iPad. Or there was the Xbox, the Xbox 360, and then the Xbox One. Uh, it's it's so annoying when companies do that because then you know what the problem is? You try and Google the original product, and it's really hard to find. Like if you're like, oh, I want I want to know about the original Xbox. I'll look for the Xbox One. You'll actually find stuff on the Xbox One, not the original Xbox, right? Or you're like, oh, I want to find stuff on the first iPad, so I'll look for iPad. And then you find iPad number three. Because the next generation of iPad, they're going to call iPad, iPad second generation, which is different from the iPad 2. You know, like it's just confusing, confusing name schemes. Um, actually, kind of reminds me of, there's a really funny video from the Angry Video Game Nerd called Chronologically Confused. And he goes to town on like movie franchises and video games that uh, were really bad with like their naming conventions where they made things needlessly confusing. So I think names should be descriptive and help people understand what it is they're looking for. So getting all fancy and calling your system an Xbox One or an iPad or the prequel to Descent is Descent. I mean, come on, come on, stop, stop being silly. Come up with a real name that differentiates it. Call it Descent Zero or Descent Origins, you know. Yeah, maybe it's a little contrived and like played out by now, but at least it's a at least it's a title that's informative. Oh, come on. Um, another complaint, by the way, about this game is that uh, people got motion sick while playing it. Like as advanced as it was, and as influential as it was, and as as cool as it was, um, people did report getting motion sick while playing this game, which is understandable. Which is understandable. Um, I actually am not getting motion sick at all. But I don't know if I'm just immune to it because I play lots of video games or what. But I don't think I'm immune to motion sickness because when I play the Oculus Rift, within like 20 minutes, no matter what I'm playing, I start to feel motion sick. Maybe that's just a sign I'm old. But, ooh, look at this, a hidden weapon. Lasers boosted to level 2, yes. Although now we're trapped in the room again, the closet. We trapped ourselves. Ow, who did that? You're going to get laser level 2'd. And he did. And all was good. All right, and level myself out here. Uh, boom! You know what? Destroying robots is less scary than destroying evil demonic space imps. So, like, it does remind me of Doom in some ways, but in other ways, not really. Um, but, yeah, I could see this being, like, an advanced version of Doom, as I say. Like, the engine is definitely more advanced. I mean, Doom used all sprites. They didn't use, like, 3D polygonal, like, wireframe meshes for their bad guys. That was, you know, it wasn't until Quake when that started to happen. Oh, this room is empty. Oh, wait, this is the room I came from. Okay. So we're just going to haphazardly explore this level, I think. Um, because that worked out so well for us in the last level. Why not do it again? Why not just sort of wander around aimlessly? Um, your shields can go up to like an infinite amount. They're up to 112. So I figured out the orange is my shields. That much I know. So we don't want that to drop too low. Because then that'll be bad news for everyone involved here. Then we'll basically die. And then Jay's awesome adventure will end in an awesome tragedy. Which, there will be nothing awesome about that. <laughs> um, did you guys own joysticks, by the way? When uh, when you, uh, you know, were DOS gamers back in the day? So as I said in, in at the beginning of this video, I never owned... Oh yeah, you know what? We never saved those people in the first level. We just left them to die. The station exploded and those people... That sign is reminding me. There were two people on that level. We just never saved them. Uh, I feel bad about those guys now. Um, but did you guys own joysticks... For your computers back in the day like as i said i never did every single memory i have of playing video games on dos is using a keyboard and once in a while a mouse but it was you know until like the era of windows 95 it was almost always just on a keyboard and i lived for like a good 10 years of gaming before windows 95 you know like i i did some i did some gaming man i did some gaming um it was mostly it wasn't all computer gaming in that era you know, computer gaming, I guess, came into effect kind of after Nintendo was a thing. My ship was destroyed. Game over. Oh, man. Uh, you placed first. Enter your cool saying. Press escape when done. Um, hmm. What's my cool saying? If they're going to make... If they're going to make fun of you, then they... Oh. <laughs> I wanted to put, if they're going to make fun of you, then they were never your friends to begin with. I wanted to put, like, the dorkiest saying ever. Um, how about, um, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, hold on. 
haven't met. There you go. A stranger is just a friend you haven't met. It's like the friendliest saying ever of like a pilot who was sent in to slaughter everything he encountered. Um, okay, and how do I accept that? Enter just like alternates back and forth. Escape? There we go. Jay, the rookie, with his high score uh, in 35 minutes and his saying of a, uh, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met. There you go. Uh, now, can we go ahead and load Jay's awesome adventure? Yes, we can. So we can get another shot at this level. I have a feeling that level two is kind of the extent of where we're going to see Descent today. I hope that's not disappointing for you guys. As I say, I've never played this game before, so I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. And I'm really just here having some fun today on this uh, this quest to play through the 1001 book. Uh, but yeah, never owned, never owned a joystick for a computer. And actually, I do kind of remember that joysticks were like a bit of a hassle to set up back in the day. Look, I'm trying to dodge shots this time and actually be good at this game. Um, oh, wait, maybe yellow is, like, sh ship integrity and blue is shields. Whatever. There's, it's like armor and health and doom. It's all the same. Is it hit points? If it's hit points, then it keeps me alive, and so it's all the same. Um, and, oh, I don't think we ever went in here. Let's check it out, as, uh, Steve Rule would say. Um, uh, but yeah, I remember, I remember joysticks were even, like, a hassle to set up back then. I mean, everything back in the day was a hassle, like, setting up a sound card. You know, half the games that you, you got, it didn't work for and stuff. Uh, this game, by the way, uses all software rendering, no 3D cards involved. Uh, mainly because it came from an era when 3D cards were, like, not yet a thing. Who's shooting me? Oh, it's this, this, this dick. Let's get him. Oh, and there's another dick over here. I'm surrounded by dicks. Um... But yeah, there's no no 3D card here because this was back before 3D cards were a thing, you know? There was no Voodoo 3DFX card. NVIDIA, I don't even know if it existed. Maybe it did. I, I'm not saying definitively that it didn't, but I, I'd never heard of it back in, in the day. Ooh, blue key card. Yes, please. All right, we can open a special blue door now. That's good to know. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have a 3D card till till like a long time later. Uh, as I say, like, I, I remember having, like, computers that didn't even have Windows 3.1, let alone Windows 95, let alone a 3D card. I remember getting a sound card was, like, a big deal back in the day. Oh, look! Wait, you can just go in this door? Oh, my God. I just left those people to die for no reason, man. I didn't realize you could just go through the door. <laughs> I just crashed through and saved them. All right, well, I left some scientists to die, apparently because I was too lazy to uh, bother to rescue them in the last level. But it's, it, when our boss debriefed us and asked us if, if there were any survivors, we were just like, no, no, I, I didn't see anyone. I mean, if there was a survivor, news to me, man, I didn't see anyone in there. Everyone was dead. Robots had killed everyone with using laser blasts conspicuously similar to our laser blasts. But yep, they, they totally killed everyone. Iced them all. Turns out it was not an idle threat. They were going to kill everyone. Kill all humans, I think, is their motto. Because they're robots and all, you know. Um, where is the blue door, by the way? Because we want to we wanna check that out. Okay, it's actually to my left over here. Let's go and do this. Right? This is the blue door? Yeah. All right. We're going to see what's behind blue door number one. Should be something cool, I imagine. I imagine if someone's good at this game, they can be, like, dodging all these shots and stuff. But I'm like, I, it takes me enough effort just to line my shots up, let alone dodging anything. Danger. All right. Oh, there's a bunch of robots in here. You guys know you have a pretty bad robot infestation, right? Just a bunch of tubes with robots just floating in it, looking to cause trouble. Um, Descent here also, by the way, uh, was ported to PlayStation. Um, but then, uh, it has, like, kind of a rough history of porting. I think the PlayStation was one of the few systems that it was ported to. I think it was also ported to, like, Mac and stuff like that. Um, but it was ported to PlayStation. And then at various points in time, ports were announced for the 3DF, the 3DX, the Sega Saturn, the N64, and even the WiiWare. Even as modern as the Wii, a port was announced. None of those ports ever existed. None of them ever materialized. A lot of empty promises over the years. I mean, everything ranging from the 32X to the Wii. They said they were going to port it to. Just never got around to it. I mean, what what were the developers doing? Were, how busy were they that they couldn't make one of these ports a thing? They did the PlayStation. And then apparently, it was so hard doing the PlayStation, they were like, forget the Sega Saturn. Like, they abandoned the Sega Saturn. 
with like the WiiWare, they said they were going to do it, and then they just never have. Although to the developers' credits, the developers' credits, they have released the source code for Descent, so you can actually just go and get the source code and make a port yourself. And so actually, at least it's this weird situation where like, you know, they said they were going to make a port for the 32X and the Sega Saturn stuff, they never bothered, but you can play this game on like the, an Oculus Rift, you know, because like fans have done the port. So it's like, if you leave it up to fans, they'll do it, but uh, the actual developers, eh, can't be bothered. <laughs> kind of funny thing. Uh, kind of kind of funny. So, yeah, I don't know. All right, so this is... Oh, the red key. I thought this was the red door. Whoa, we're actually doing pretty good on this level. Uh, if I do say so myself. Okay, so now the red door is, like, way up there. But let's go back, man. Let's go back. We're doing okay. We have 104 energy shields. We have 65 yellows. I think that's pretty good. All things considered. There was a zone that like healed us, but I forget where it was. I really should have paid attention to that, actually. Wait, is it down there? Hold on. If it is, we should totally heal before we do anything else. Because we've never had we've never gotten this far in this level before. We definitely want to stay alive. So let's let's just take our time here. Nobody's in a rush. Nobody has to die. Fuel area. Oh, the yellow is fuel, I guess? Oh yeah. A hundred of the fuels. Looking good, man. Looking good, feeling good, smelling good. We are definitely ready, ready to tango. Uh, oops, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm like trying to like look over at like my stats and stuff, and I'm like slamming into the wall here. All right, so we want to go forward then, and then into the red zone. All right, we're we're succeeding at life, guys. Exploring levels, having fun, descending, as as the name of the game suggests. Um, oh my god. Um, so what do you guys think of these old, like, uh, first-person shooters that were kind of like mazes? Oh, look, my laser got boosted again. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, we just took that guy to town. He was sleeping. He was like, hey, what the... <laughs> um, I think it was, like, kind of a given that, like, in the early days of first-person shooters, every first-person shooter had to, like, be a maze. You know, they all followed kind of the Doom Wolfenstein 3D kind of, like, uh, model. Oh, that's, that's the thingy. That's the thing we got to blow up. Blow it up. Blow it up. Fire all the missiles. Fire all the missiles. Okay, it's blowing up. Now, where's the exit? Where is the exit? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where Where's this exit? T, five, four. Oh, no, I'm, like, spinning all over the place. Oh, no, where's the exit? Wait. Uh, do you see an exit here? Because I certainly, I really do not. Oh my god, five. Oh no, wait, I have like 20 seconds. Okay, hold on. Let, let's take our time and blow these guys up. There's another guy over here. Hopefully they don't kill us. Oh, I think the exit's... I think he's guarding the exit. Okay. 13, 12... Oh my god, the screen is shaking all over the place. I can't control my ship. Homing missiles. Oh my god, stop rotating the ship! Get... Wait, I think it's up here. Possibly... No, oh, we're blowing up with the base <laughs> game over. You know, we died in a blaze of glory. And I think that's all we ever could have hoped for ourselves. And look, we get to enter another cool saying. <laughs> I like that this is the high score thing. Enter the coolest saying you know. Okay, how about cool dudes don't do drugs? They tell the truth. Oh my god, this doesn't fit either. Oh, well, you guys know what I'm intended to write. I'm just trying to come up with, like, the lamest things ever. Cool dudes don't do drugs. They tell the truth. There you go. It's from, uh, like, an anti-drug PSA from school. So we beat, technically, I'm maintaining we beat level 2. Even though we died in a blaze of glory, I will take it. So Descent here is one of the games in the book of thousands of video games you must play before you die. I have twice entered the mines, twice died a blazy, gloriful death. But uh, one time I failed to beat level 2, um, but the, the next time I beat it. So I'm considering it a success. We have successfully descended, and uh, now we're able to render a verdict. Um, so is this game a game that you must play before you die? Well, this was the first game to really do like six axis first person shooter really well. And it inspired a lot of developers since. Again, Terminal Velocity, which I, I'm going to commit to. We're going to play for this Saturday. I'm going to show you guys Terminal Velocity. It is different from this, actually. It's not quite the same. Uh, it is a bit more of like a flying game than a first-person shooter, but it uh, you'll see it's very obviously inspired by Descent. 
Um, I think the scent is important for a lot of reasons. I know a lot of game companies and developers and stuff have been inspired over the years um, because of playing Descent. So it's a historically important game. I think it holds up as a reasonably fun game. Um, it wasn't the most fun game I've ever tried before. You know, like if I'm thinking of like first impressions, um, it was it was totally playable, totally doable. Um, but I was getting a little disoriented with the controls sometimes, and like facing the floor and the corners and stuff. And I think I just didn't have enough practice with the controls yet. But all that meant was that it was like a fine experience, but it wasn't like the most fun I've ever had with a game that I've never tried before. So I think Descent's a decent game. I don't think I would say that you've got to go out of your way to play it. Um, but it is kind of a cool game, and it's historically interesting too, so uh, those are my thoughts on it. What do you guys think of Descent here? Would you consider it a must-play? Do you have fond memories of playing this one? Have you ever heard of it before? Um, whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you think of the game, whatever you think of my opinion of the game, hopefully I've made today entertaining. If I have, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and all that good stuff. Um, and don't forget, guys, that a stranger is just a friend you haven't met. So if you aren't subscribed to me, you're a stranger. If you subscribe, we can totally be friends. Trust me, it'll work out. It'll all be great. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm going to sign off here because I'm starting to babble. So, guys, it has been a blast. Literally, get the pun, right? Um, you guys take care of yourselves until we meet again. And uh, until we do, peace. Oh, uh, by the way, I love seeing these, like, uh, order now screens when you exit a video game. Totally a shareware thing, guys. This is like, all games in the 90s did this. They, it's like they were selling you the game you were playing as you were playing it. Or as you were exiting it, I guess. But, uh, good memories.